Don't you guys just love fall? I know I do. One of the best things about fall is all of the pumpkins. But you know what's not so great about fall? A rotten pumpkin. Today, we're gonna play a game where you have to try to identify a rotten pumpkin from a good pumpkin. The rules are simple. I'll give you the name of a Bible character, then I'll show you three pumpkins with facts about that Bible character. Two of these facts will be true, but one will not be. That's the rotten pumpkin. All you have to do is hold up the number of fingers for the pumpkin you think is rotten. One, two, or three. Easy enough, right? All right, let's go. Our first Bible character is King David. Now, which of these is not true about King David? One, David killed a giant. Two, David was Israel's first king. Three, David was a shepherd. Remember, hold up one, two, or three fingers based on which pumpkin you think is not telling the truth. Okay, time's up. Who is holding up two fingers? You're correct. King David was Israel's second king. Good job. Let's try another. Our next Bible character is Samson. Now, which of these is not true about Samson? One, Samson was very weak. Two, Samson had long hair. Three, Samson killed a lion. Okay, time to get those fingers up. Which pumpkin do you think is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who's holding up two fingers? You should be holding up one because Samson was very strong. Let's do another one. Rahab is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Rahab? One, Rahab was from Jericho. Two, Rahab helped the Israelite spies. Three, Rahab hung a bird cage from her window. All right, it's time to decide. Which pumpkin do you think is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up three fingers? You are correct. Rahab actually tied a scarlet rope in her window. Let's try another. Peter is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Peter? One, Peter walked on water. Two, Peter lied about knowing Jesus. Three, Peter was a tax collector. So what do you think? Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up three fingers? You're correct. Peter was actually a fisherman. Good job. Jonah is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Jonah? One, Jonah was swallowed by a fish. Two, Jonah spent five days in a fish's belly. Three, Jonah went to Nineveh. So what do you think? Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? That's it, time is up. Who's holding up two fingers? You are correct. Jonah was actually in the fish's belly for three days. That's still a long time. Eve is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Eve? One, Eve was Adam's daughter. Two, Eve was the first woman to ever live. Three, Eve was Abel's mother. So what do you think? Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up three fingers? You should be holding up only one. Eve was actually Adam's wife. Esther is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Esther? One, Esther was a queen. Two, Esther was a Jew. Three, Esther was married to Haman. So what do you think? Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who is holding up three fingers? 
You are correct. Esther was actually married to King Xerxes. Let's try one last question. Noah is our final Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Noah? One, Noah built an ark. Two, Noah painted a rainbow on the ark. Three, Noah had three sons. Which of these pumpkins is not telling the truth? Time's up. Who's holding up two fingers? You are correct. God actually put a rainbow in the sky when Noah came out of the ark. Great job, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome to CB Kids Online. I'm happy you're joining in today. This week, we're starting a couple of lessons on a really important topic, thankfulness. We've got some great Bible stories and other fun things to share. But first, let's start with prayer. Why do we always start with prayer? Because no matter whether you have exciting, fun things happening in your life, or if you have some difficult or confusing things happening in your life, prayer is a good place to start. When we pray, we thank God and we praise God and we ask Him for help in our lives. Go ahead and tell your family some things you want to pray about. And now we're going to pray in three, two, one. Dear God, thank you so much for all of the kids and families joining in. Thank you so much for loving us every day, Lord. And thank you for all that you do for us. Please bless us and help us to do the good things that you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I've been thinking a lot about being thankful recently. Do you ever think about being thankful? I bet you do. Sometimes. What kind of things are you thankful for? I'm thankful for honey. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my friends. I'm thankful for my house. I'm thankful for all the toys and nice things I have. And I'm thankful for my um for my dog big shan i'm thankful for my hermit crab his name is honey i'm thankful for my parents i'm thankful for everything i'm thankful for my friends and i'm thankful for my dog and i'm thankful for my cousins and i'm thankful for all my family what are you thankful for yeah i do those are some great things to be thankful for now a little game for you. Do you see my box here? I have some things inside that I wondered if you could think of a reason to be thankful for them. I'll pull them out one thing at a time and you see if you can come up with a reason to be thankful for that thing. Okay? Ready? Here we go. Hmm. The first thing in my box is a juice box. What are some reasons we could be thankful for a juice box? Well, we can drink it when we're thirsty. That's a good reason to be thankful. And this one feels cold. Maybe it was in the refrigerator. That makes me thankful for refrigerators. Oh, and how about we can share it with our friends? I sure am thankful for friends to share things with, aren't you? Did you come up with some other fun answers for our juice box? Let's see what our next thing is. Oh, it's a shoelace. Hmm, what can we be thankful for about a shoelace? Well, they do keep our shoes on when we go out to run or play. Oh, and we can be thankful that we have shoes to wear, especially when it's cold. And how about this? Are you thankful for fingers that can tie your shoes? Or fingers that can do other things, even if you don't tie shoes yet? Hmm, I think there's one more thing in my box. It's dog treats. What can we be thankful for with dog treats? I do have a dog. And she's pretty messy and jumpy sometimes, but I'm still thankful for her. I bet these dog treats came from a store where people work and truck drivers bring stuff into the store every day. We can be thankful for the people who work at the store and the people who drive the trucks to get the stuff there. Oh, and the bag is colorful too. We can even be thankful for colors. Hmm, it looks like there are a lot of ways to be thankful, even for little things. 
And we didn't even get to big things like our families or our food. In our Bible story today, there were some people who had something that they should have been very thankful for. Our story is from the New Testament book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 16. It's a story about some people who Jesus helped. Let's see if the people were really thankful. I'm reading it from the children's Bible storybook. The Healed Leper, Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 16. As Jesus passed through a certain village, ten lepers waited to meet him. They had heard he might come that way. They hoped that he might heal them. Because they were lepers, they were not allowed to stand near the road. From a distance they called out, Jesus, teacher, have mercy on us. They wore hoods over their heads and scarves over their faces. This is so no one would have to look at the awful sores that came from having leprosy. They begged Jesus to heal them. Jesus pointed back to the town. Go and show yourselves to the priest. This was another way of telling the lepers that they were healed. Only people who had been healed were supposed to go to the priest. The men did as Jesus told them. As they walked toward the temple to see the priest, they felt a strange thing happen. Blood tingled through their arms and legs. A strange warmth went up and down their backs. One man pulled up his sleeve and saw that the skin was growing back healthy. He shouted, Praise God! Praise the Lord God Almighty! I've been healed! I'm all better! Then he turned around as fast as he could, and he ran straight back to where Jesus was preaching. He fell at Jesus' feet, and he grabbed hold of him. Thank you! Oh, thank you, he said. Jesus looked at the man who was singing out his thanks to God. He said, But weren't there ten who were healed? Where are the other nine? Then Jesus told him, You can go now. Your faith has saved you and made you better. Why did only one man return? It could be that the other nine did not come back to say thank you for the same reasons that people do not thank God today. Hmm. Wow. Jesus had the power to heal those people from a really bad disease called leprosy, and he loved them enough to do it. But when Jesus told them to go to the priest and they realized that Jesus had healed them, only one of them came back to say, thank you. That makes me wonder about something. If Jesus did something really great for me, would I be one of the ones who said thank you? Or would I be one of the ones who just kept going and didn't bother to say thanks? Well, Jesus has done lots of great things for me and all of us. When we hear this story, it's easy to think that we would be the one to say thank you to Jesus if it was us. But do we say thank you to Jesus when he helps us each day? God helps our bodies heal. He helps us have food and a place to sleep. And he helps us have families and friends who care about us. And we have school or work to do. And when the one man came back to Jesus, Jesus told the man that his faith had made him whole. The other lepers were healed from leprosy too. The Bible says they realized it when they went to the priest. Their bodies were clean and they didn't have those awful painful sores anymore. But this man must have gotten something even more. Jesus knew that being thankful helps us be happier and have more peace in our hearts. When the one man came back to Jesus to say thank you, Jesus knew he would be even more blessed than the others. They were all healed of their disease, but this one would be happier because he was thankful to God. Oh, that reminds me of some excellent Bible verses. Let's read them now. These verses are from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16, 17, and 18. It's in the New Testament. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, and 18. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. 
for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Jesus healed ten lepers, but only one of them came back to say thank you. Only one was thankful or grateful. How sad for the others to be healed in their body, but not in their heart. This week, maybe you can play our box game with your family. Have each person pick out something and see if you can think of a reason to be thankful for it. Maybe a bunch of reasons. Some of the things will be harder to think of a way to be thankful for them. Some days it's easier to think of reasons to be thankful, and some days it's harder. Sometimes there are really tough things in our lives that make it really tough to be thankful to God. But here is something we can always be thankful for every day, that God loves us and He is always here with us. God says He will never leave us or let us go. He'll be there to enjoy the fun days with and to lift us up on the hard days. And one of the things that helps us know God is with us is by us being thankful. This week, practice being thankful. Say thanks to God and to the people around you. You'll feel better, and they will too. By the way, I'm thankful for you. Have a great thankful week, and stick around for some fun songs to worship God with. <laughs> I like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to remember everything That the Lord has done I want to be of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift Yeah.